Yeah, not at all. Okay, so I'm recording this. So, hey, John, how are you? Um, how are you? We have the 585 assignment. Maybe I should have made this video long ago, but it's like, so you pick out an association and you spend the semester engaged in trying to understand how these, this association might um, develop a service that they offer to their members. You know, maybe it's for free. <laughs> um, and as by virtue of being a member of the association, you get a tweet every day or every other day it said hey you know you should pay attention to this technology you should pay attention to that technology something of interest to those members um and so you're designing an information service and proposing it to them saying hey this is what you guys should do um your first step is to write that rfp so this would be like a great gig if you could get it somebody calls you up and says hey would you write an rfp for us we'll pay you to write the rfp and then you're allowed to respond to it and propose your own service. So, you know, you get to work both ends. And sometimes that actually happens, you know. So, and so you want to have the experience of writing an RFP. So you have to figure out, well, and I can't remember which your association is, the technical writers, right? Right, Society for Technical Communication. Yeah, STC, right, okay. So STC says, you know, we, we've got like, what, 8,000 members or something like that. I just made that number up. Um, <laughs> they pay 100 bucks a year to be members maybe we'll spend 40 grand on developing some kind of service that's going to keep our membership connected to the organization. And, and so would you write us an RFP? And your RFP, your request for proposals, would then get sent out to everybody. And the RFP says, okay, we want to offer this service. We want your response to be delivered to us. We want your response to have some spec work and have a sample, a couple of sample blog posts and a couple of sample tweets and a sample extended blog post. So in effect, you're, so that's what the RFP says. These are the things we want. So you write in the specs, which I've pretty much written for you. You write in the specs in the RFP, but you substitute what they would actually put in their RFP, saying, we are STC, this is what our members do, this is their current use of information technology, we know that there's all this stuff coming down the road, in particular these five technologies that we've decided we're really interested in, and we want to get a response from potential vendors saying, how would they help us solve this problem? The problem is that STC members need to get informed on a regular basis about these five emerging technologies. So you write that as an RFP. And then the next week you turn around and say, hey, John, John, John LLC, I'm going to respond to the RFP. Here's my proposal. Um, it's got the spec work. It's got these sample blog posts. And in writing the RFP and in writing the response to the RFP, you're essentially forced to do research and to learn about how the community of practice of technical writers, how the community of technical writers would be interested in that's you and me, but that's you, I think, right? Yeah, so you have to um, get through a lot of information about emerging technologies and pick out the ones that are. So every week you get directed to other highlights, some of which are relevant, some of which are not but all of which should be stimulating and saying, oh, the telepresence robot, well, what does that mean for a technical writer? Well, I don't know. <laughs> so you figure it out. Like, what is a technical writer going to do with a telepresence robot? Well, they're going to have to learn to write differently. So that's why they have to be informed about these things. So okay, so would I be, so with my uh, particular community of practice, I wouldn't necessarily be looking for articles that show how tech writers are currently using these. I mean, if I find one, like like the example you gave, uh, what was it, the uh, Reflect? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a great find. I mean, yeah. I've, I've been looking for things like that. And, and like I said in my reply, I've been finding articles that are more of, well, we know this is coming and this is what we might have to do. For example, the augmented reality ones. But, uh, yeah, so I've been trying to find actual examples of tech writers using, for example, augmented reality, and I, I just haven't found that yet. So it doesn't sound like I necessarily need to. I can find things and then say, hey, this is how our field could use it. Yes. Okay. 
All right. Absolutely. Okay. That's, that's your yeah. value added. Yeah. Okay. So the reason for focusing on a community instead of just saying, let's do readings about emerging technology is that I, and, and, and the reasons that I don't provide all the, the readings is I want people to sort of discover them on their own, which I think is sort of more interesting. Yeah, no, that's, that's the reason cool. I share is that you get, you get 20 readings now that you can, you're going to choose however many you want, four or five or do your own research. But, um, and then I want you to think about them in terms of a specific community. And presumably people pick communities that they care about and that they're interested in. Right. So, yeah, so, so you, you have the chance to sort of frame your whole work that way. And maybe it's a little convoluted with the RFP and the response, but you have to have a reason for doing something, so. Yeah. No, I understand the framework. It was just some of the particulars. Um, and yeah. then my, my wiki is a little complicated because I'm still learning my own project with the next <laughs> continue to learn that tiddly wiki thing which I'm a big fan of obviously it has its challenges um, and I'm trying in the current wiki to take all and that I set it up so that I get all the stuff on Mondays and then I spend Tuesday lifting and writing and I thought I'd get it done by 10 a.m. but it looks like it takes me till four well, two weeks well, work anyway, so. <laughs> yeah no I think that's fine for everybody um but I try and I, I'm still gonna go back in the last one and and create my own I'm going to use this the, the student um, I'm mixing up my 553 and 585 classes but um, actually I don't think I owe anything I, I think I you're not in 553 too are you no there is somebody in our 585 class that is um, I'm using both yeah and I keep yeah. confusing them too and she's like oh, I can't remember which class is which just like that. and they're similar <laughs> but in one they're doing a project of all different kinds, and yeah. you guys are all doing roughly the same thing, but for different associations. So, yeah, never mind. I don't think I owe anything to 585 today. I think you're set for the week. I think we are, yeah. yeah the goal is to get everything done on Tuesday, and then I, I've never run a class. What do you think about that? Like, where it's, well, in, you know, during the semester, it would be every other week. In the summer, it's every week, where it's like, okay, you get all your stuff, kind of work on your own, and there's a little bit of conversation if you want to have it, but no obligations. So. This is, yeah, the way you're running this class is very similar to how um, uh, Michelle Salmon ran um, uh, 590 Five last spring, and then how uh, Dr. Stam ran um, uh, 553 last, last summer. Yes, yes. Yeah. Some principles, principles and project yeah. class. Yeah. Whereas, but the main difference was, whereas Dr. Stam was just like, Here's what we're going to do. Go ahead and do it, and I'll check in with me if you need to. So it was really pretty much just go have fun, create. And Professor Salmon last semester would have us periodically check in with her each week and just have some guided assignments. So yeah. I think what you're doing with this class is kind of somewhere in the middle between what Dr. Stan and what Professor Salmon had done. So, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I like, I like to have students – have some interaction every time I ask everybody says that they learn a lot from seeing other people's work yeah so I kind of structured it I I um I was psyched about really being a heavy blackboard user because I really hate blackboard so I um I worked with we have a new uh, instructional design person on staff so I kind of worked with him a little bit and he gave me some of the ideas about building the links of the discussions and and it's okay but I'm still not super happy with it. Um, eh, yeah, Blackboard has its challenges, but then again, so did Angel. Uh, yeah, everything does. I hate my, my approach to software, like in the old Microsoft Word versus WordPerfect wars, like software sucks, get used to it. You're, you're going to yeah. have everything. So I don't like anything. Yeah, I mean, there's pros to Word and there's cons to Word. There's pros to FrameMaker and there's cons to FrameMaker. I use them both. <laughs> yeah, I use yeah. – right now I've reduced my use of Microsoft Word – to outline mode because nothing else beats words outline mode for drag and drop ability to move yeah. in and out of an outline can't i can't do that in tiddly weekly with drag and drop but you can in word so, yeah that is a pretty strong feature um yeah, yeah nothing else google docs can't do it yet so they have heading one heading two but you can't drag and drop and promote and demote so only word does that they used to have a better export function where you can export from word directly to powerpoint um, it's a little complicated. So, anyway, um, so you had some specific questions, I think, right? Or, or did you? Yeah, let me just. Uh, I want to share your screen. That might 
be helpful. Um, oh, okay. How share, do I go about There's a share screen button on the bottom. Share. Ah, share screen. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you can go through either the wiki or the Blackboard or both, and that way, um, especially if you, you know, that way you'll, I'll pull up and I'll see where you struggle with things that I think are perfectly clear. <laughs> Um, hmm, so you can share your browser or your screen, which I, I th usually are you on multi screen or single screen. I have a single screen, but it's just showing me a bunch of black tiles without any names. <laughs> um, I'm going to kind of randomly guess here. That's the launch meeting. The first one, desktop one, is usually the one that you want to share. Up in oh, the upper left. Ah, I see. Okay. This, uh, yeah, this is a little different. We use AT&T Connect at work, so this uh, interface yeah. is a little different. Ah, yep. ah. Very nice. Okay, so let me click to... Ah, now I can't see my browser. Yeah, tabs. that's that's, a, that's the worst part of Zoom is that it covers, like, yeah. browser tabs. Give a second here, and I'll find the... Um... All right, there's that. Back to the inbox here. All right, let me maximize that. So I'm going to scroll down to where you yep, were. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, oops, that's one of these hidden ones. There we go. Okay. Okay, so the most interesting discovery. I think we talked about this so mm -hmm. let's see my concern was that i'm finding mostly articles that are talking about the potential impact of such technologies and you said yep that's fine that's it or if i do find some actual concrete examples like the one you provided of uh reflect i think it was called that's obviously excellent too okay so i think we can consider that question answered Okay, and absolutely use reuse your interesting resources, and that's the whole point. You're finding this stuff, and that's what okay. you're going to talk about. That's and I, and I think you said that in a in a blog post somewhere or a forum post somewhere else too. Uh, but I figured, well, let me just make sure I was clear on what I was reading because yep. that's the tricky thing about having. I think you even said one time a thousand forums. We have ten thousand forum posts and replies so yeah and, and glean and thread I, everything together is uh i did that because i find the blackboard forms just get out of control after pretty much two rounds once you get more than like 20 threads i can't keep track of it anymore they're, so. yeah they're they're hard and then i just noticed two or three more questions went up <laughs> yeah so I'll, 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 <laughs> I haven't gotten to them yet today but i will get to them because you i would figure that they'd show up on wednesday morning so yeah uh, yeah, I actually, just before you sent me the email to the Zoom, I saw, saw a couple. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, they're coming my phone, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think, yeah, you, you explained the RFP, which, yeah, that I understood, and we used the template that you provided, and we just swap out the particulars. Yep, that yeah, means. Yeah, and I have to add a little bit to that template. I think we're coming up to that point of the semester, so. Yeah, yeah, and that's a little further down the road, but yeah, not too much, but yeah. And the branding, yet. the graphical appearance, yeah, you should try to get them to match as best you can. And and it's not, it's just to put some, you know, even if it's just using your like the um, same identifier, you can create a fake a Twitter account for this project, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to really use it, or you can fake the whole thing in a demo. You know, you don't have to have a real blog; you can just fake it if you're. A, if you use some sort of graphics program, you can take the whole thing. Oh, okay. So create a, a template in Illustrator or something and just... Yeah. Okay. It would be nice if you had something online, but it's not super critical, but it's easy enough to create a WordPress and a Twitter and get them to match. The idea is to, to, to give everyone the experience of building a consistent graphic identity across multiple platforms. Okay. Yeah, because that was part of my question. If I because if, if I use the free version of WordPress, I mean, I think it gives you some flexibility to customize its appearance. But unless you pay for the subscription, you're limited to maybe a fair amount. You can, I mean, you go, go grab the the images and the styles from the STC website and brand it to their specs. You're not, are you a design? Are you a graphics person? A designer? Um, I dabble in it. I mean, I'm probably. Yeah. Was, Primarily an English teacher with yeah. that kind of background, but I've I've learned how to yeah. you know, illustrate. So you know you can so yeah I would I would grab the stuff for STC off the web. Um, yeah. 
you know, if you want, if you're, if you're kind of, you might even be able to explore in their website, if you know how to do it, to grab their CSS directly, um, which is going to style their fonts and their headings and stuff. And you might be able to import that CSS to WordPress that if that's beyond your skills or desires to learn how to do that stuff, then don't, um, but just put some, some effort into it just so that it's clear that you get, and can convey in your proposal, yeah, I get it, that these things are gonna be linked. Yeah, because it would be neat, because I've never, like I said in the uh, question here, I've never done anything with microblogs, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, so it would probably behoove me to learn them, so yep. maybe I'll take a stab at setting up an account. And there you go, that's the point. Yeah, yes. and then see if I can get it to talk to WordPress, I assume I can. You can. Okay. Yep, but you know, you have to figure out, does, do I make Twitter do the work, do I make WordPress do the work, or do I have to, you know, how do they talk to each other? And that's the, that's the step I'm trying to get you to see. Yeah, yeah, that, then that's fine. I can, I can play around with that. Um, so that would make the part of the assignment for this week, the um, spec work where I think you said to include live links to something a little easier because if we have something that's live, well, we can grab the link. But if it's, if it's a, you know, if something that's faked or, um, the speaker can, yeah, and again, it doesn't have to be the text. You can use lorem ipsum to fill in the words, and you can tweet lorem ipsums if you want. No, I understand that, but I think you said something about a live link, so that made me think, okay, i got to grab something out of my browser address bar mm -hmm. and dump it into this uh, presentation. But if it's a fabricated uh, demo... Well, the opportunities for spec work, if you want to create a live link, that's great. You know, the more you have up front, the more that we're, the rest of the class and I am able to react to it. So if you create a WordPress and put a link to the WordPress to the first, just to the first page, just so that, okay, this, I've got it. This is, this is really like um, just preliminary, just to make sure that everybody doesn't wait until the last week to start with that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the more you have, the better off you'll be. Okay. That makes sense. Um, let me see, is there anything else? So Hi. do me a favor, because I was kind of perplexed why, I thought I was being so clear. Can you navigate to the, um, to the Blackboard site and then, from, or, and then from there go to the wiki? Yep, give me a second here. Yeah, it looks like you've got it in the third tab. Yeah, discussion, yep, yeah. and then go to the wiki. Yeah, and um, wait a second, didn't I put a, oh no, maybe that's the other class. Yeah, so if you open that, does that open in a new tab automatically? It does. It does. Right? Yeah. It should be there it is. Yeah, so the fourteenth June comments doesn't really tell you I guess it wasn't very clear, huh? Okay. Well what were you looking for? Yeah, what should have been in there? Notes on critiques. What's that? What should have been in here? Um The thing about how to do the reviews, I guess it's not. Okay, I'll add that. I'll add to that. Okay. It's, it's nowhere obvious how you do your, where your assignment assigned. Oh, the groups? Yeah. <laughs> no, I couldn't find that anywhere. And when you said, when well, you sent me the link directly to mine, and I kind of backtracked down, and I saw student, and yeah, then. It's nowhere obvious, is that? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And, and there, I don't know, I mean, there is a search function in here. No, 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 you shouldn't, it shouldn't be that hard. I should be much better at this. It, it would have been nice to see like a TOC or something in, 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 um, in this wiki. Yeah, uh, there is one actually, but it's, it's hidden if you... Um, it's, yeah, it's in here somewhere. If I think you it's expose behind. the menu, if you expose it right there, um, and then, yeah, see, it's not obvious, is it? No, click on... Home will restore this to the. Yeah, uh, home always restores. Home brings me back to this, but that's yeah. just showing okay. you. I, let me. That's see, and and yeah, I need more feedback from stuff like this because, like I said, this is sort of an exploration. Okay. The other thing I noticed. So let's say I jump to. I'm just going to go to. I'm going to go to the very bottom one here, the May 23rd. And I'm like, okay, that's what I thought I might be looking for, but I actually want to go back. Oops, I go up to my browser arrows and they're grayed out. So there's... Yeah, there's no way so to, the way to go back is counterintuitive. Um, you click on the close tiddler button, which is the X. 
Okay. And that takes you back. And I know it's like, I'm, I'm, (laughs) I should put a back button on the tiddlers. I don't think it would be hard. The cool thing about Tiddly Wiki is that I can do that. The nasty thing about Tiddly Wiki is you have to sort of come up with all these things yourself. Uh, Okay. Which is good, but so let me um, let me edit that first one right while we're here. Um, so it pretty much gives you a blank slate, and then you just do what you yes. want. Yeah, okay. which is cool for as a designer. Mm-hmm. be just a second. Sure. Actually, if you stop sharing your screen. Okay. You don't even need to stop. I just did it. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> now I'm sharing mine. Okay. So, so you can't help but to get a little taste of Tiddly Wiki. So this is what it looks like when you type the code. Now I'm going to search for the one you're working on. Uh-huh. Now it comes in as a link. Come on. Uh, I see. So the left is your. This is a WYSIWYG kind of preview. Yeah, the code window on the right is your WYSIWYG again. Yeah. Right. Here's the list of the students, because I have tag students, so it shows it as a, a fill. Right. Way cool, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the link because I've included it in in brackets. If I wanted to have the actual text of that tiddler, here's the name of the tiddler. But if I enclose it in double curly braces, then you actually get the text of it. Ah, okay. Kind of weird, but um, that's just confusing us. I'll test this. put this in bold so that people see it. Hmm. And so it automatically saves. And now, um, now we'll stop the share. We'll go back to your share. Okay. And click on 14th June. And you're not going to see it because what you've done is you've actually downloaded this HTML file and you're running it locally in your browser. Yeah, so I need to refresh? You have to refresh. There you go. Look at that. Coding on the fly. And if you open that tiddler by clicking on the down arrow, the little tool um, next to the X, Yep, and click edit. Ah. So what it's doing is it's actually putting the text of two different tiddlers into your tiddler. One is called Critique 2 and the other is called Reviewer. Oh, it's called Critique 1, but I didn't build it for that. Okay. So if you grab the name of Critique 2, Jay Freiberg, just grab that with your, um, on the left there. Oh, right here. Yep, just grab the whole, not the braces, just the name of the tiddler. No, just the name of the first tiddler. Yeah. Okay. Copy that. Okay. The next out of this tiddler, you can save it if you want, but nothing, you can't obviously write back over mine. You can just write in your own version. And then search for that tiddler. I'm sorry, say that again? Yeah, open up the menu bar and search for that tiddler. 
Um, it's up on the menu bar on top. Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah. This over a little bit. Well, I have two matches. Yeah, and so let's edit this tiddler. Okay. Oh, I moved the window again here. And so then that's how we generate that tiddler. Ah, okay. And it's notice the last thing is list links filter tag title. So that yes. all those those tiddlers, the links there are all the things that are tagged with your name and critique too. So it's kind of cool. It's a little database. Yeah, know? yeah, it's neat. And it's, it's neat. very it's it's Tiddly Wiki is quite a um it's a blend between writing and reading and hypertext, but then it also if you're interested, it gets you it pulls you into sort of a um uh, Writing light code. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a code feel to this. Oh yeah, absolutely, and it's yeah. kind of cool. So I teach this in my um, in IDT 575, which I think we'll offer in the spring, called Designing and Writing Interactive Texts. So oh, I think that was offered last spring. Yeah. What's that? I think that was offered last spring, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also run an open pretty much an open studio so any student who wants to do it in like the fall who wants to learn tiddly wiki can enroll in an independent study and i have a whole series of exercises and trainings and the reason i'm showing you this is because i'm going to share this video with the 585 class and i never miss an opportunity to do a commercial for tiddly wiki sure. <laughs> no that's um, great yeah and you can you can save this if you click that red button I click the, oh the red button the save button this one right here. Yeah, it's going to save it, but it's going to say, huh? Where do, you, where do you want to save this? I, I'm, I'm not, you know, it saved it somewhere. So, but it's not really saved. So, right. Yeah, this is a local copy. Yeah, so just, it's just not, it's just like to get it to actually, so that you can write in it, it's a whole nother, slightly different process, but it's pretty straightforward. So, yeah. you don't have to worry about messing my stuff up. <laughs> so we can't hijack your, uh, your syllabus and... Uh, no, no, I don't think so. So anyway, that's kind of so. I think that that addressed your questions, and I'm thanks. It does. Um, it does. I appreciate for pointing you. that out. And um, yeah, and and I like the Zoom, so we can do this whenever you want, um, especially yeah. today. Yeah, it just happened to be that I uh, woke up not feeling uh, 100%. So, yeah, so where do you work? At? You've told me in the intro, and I forget. Yeah, no problem. Um, I work at Linnell, L-E-N-E-L. -E -E We're a division of United Technologies Corporation. In fact, there is somebody else in 585 who works for a subdivision of UTC. So I found that interesting to um, okay. see. I can't remember who it is, though. Yeah. Um, and what do you do? You're a technical writer. Yeah, I'm a technical writer. I've been there for about three years. So what we do at Linnell is we create um, software product that manages uh, access control for for buildings of all different sizes. So you know, you get your little badge and you swipe it in front of a yep. reader. You get in. But this this software uh, called OnGuard. If you go to Linnell.com, you can you can read up on OnGuard. Does a lot more than just access control. It'll integrate with fire alarm systems, uh, security systems, HVAC. Uh -huh. Elevator control, uh, TV, you know, it does everything. And so what do you do for them? So uh, as a technical writer, I write and maintain a lot of the manuals that uh, support OnGuard and its different modules. What we're doing is it's a thick client application, so it gets installed on a workstation and it can be spread across the server. And uh, now that I think about this and you're recording this, it probably shouldn't be. Well, this is a product that's been on the field for years and years and years. So it's you know it's an enterprise product. It, it can be. It can what be, do you guys write your documentation in? Primarily structured FrameMaker, unstructured FrameMaker, and then for like release notes, we use a uh, Word. And then from FrameMaker, we can export to uh, HTML for the online help. Yeah, we're trying to move away from that to go more. Um, dynamic with uh, XML and Ditto and stuff like that. That's okay. Well, there's my pitch. So, <laughs> um, the tiddly wiki approach, um, you could actually do all your documentation in that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we could. We could. Um, and so as a project? 
you might, if you wanted to, you might take a slice of it and weakify it and just explore what would it mean to, to maintain and write your documentation in a wiki instead of in structured framework. Um, things like tags, so that you can tag things, so that all the things that are relevant to where we are, you know, what the question is, you've got tags to things, which you probably don't have in structured framework or framemaker. And no, not, not the way we currently use yeah, And this imports and exports um, HTML, XML. XML is a little different, but it, does, it does deals with JSON up. JSON. Do you guys oh. JSON at all? Yeah, our developers uh, put all the text strings for the different uh, products in JSON files. That's yep. one format they use. Yep. So um, TiddlyWiki imports JSON quite nicely. So you're suggesting this could possibly be a thesis project, is what you were saying? Yes. Ah, I like that. Yeah. Um, and the way to start would be to, to start with a small project, like an independent study. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to take our, we have one manual that's uh, almost 2,000 pages long. I wouldn't start with that one. <laughs> no. Not even maybe, well, maybe a small slice of that one. but. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You start with just like, because the, um, the whole thing, the whole, it's called hypertext, which is probably a word you've seen tossed around and not thought about what it means. But basically, I define hypertext as um, multilinear text, um, text used to mean a, 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 um, a corpus of material. So it could be words, could be images, could be videos, could be anything as a text. Um, and then multilinear, each object in the text, which could be an image, a paragraph, you know, something goes in a tiddler. Yeah. Um, and then all the tiddlers have these characteristics. What's cool about TiddlyWiki that's different is there's no back end. It's a single HTML file. Um, so oh. it's a single page app. So all of the code is included in the file. So there's no back end here. Yet oh, you're running a database, which is takes a little bit to get your head wrapped around that. Um, and so I've also got to imagine the file is pretty small in size then. Yeah, yeah. well, unless you embed images in it, which case it gets bigger. And, and yeah. so I typically run images outside the file, which breaks the single page app approach. But, um, and the other thing that's really cool about this is that we're able to now export, use TiddlyWiki as a back end to an app. So you can put it in, in an iPhone app and download all the content and then use the app updating so that people can constantly update. And it's very easy to fix your documentation. You don't, that's, actually no direct, that's actually a direction where we're currently exploring with some new products. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, so if you've got an app in there and th the problem with the documentation is, you know, it's like it's so many layers to, to update something when you make yeah. a mistake. Yep. And this breaks down your chunks to very small pieces. So you only have to deal with that one piece and everything else updates. So like if you go to my syllabus, for example, I think if you hit home, there's a link to syllabus. Yep. Um, I think I left it in the home. Yeah. Um, there's a syllabus right down there on the bottom. Um, and I think if you edit this tiddler, you'll see that there's nothing in it. Uh, well, there's, I did leave some text in it, but scroll down and you'll see that the assignments, everything is based on, um, you have to scroll in the tiddler. Okay, yeah. yeah, so everything is based on the technologies and the course projects. They're all in separate places. So I can go edit one little chunk and it all changes every time that piece is called. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. So like, like in, yeah, like in a piece of software, if you guys changed A, it has to get populated to like places in the software. Yeah. And that we handle all through tagging and appropriate management because it, it kind of it makes your manual database sort of, but not really. So what was the name of that class you're going to be offering in the spring? That, that when it comes in the spring, it will be IDT 575, but if it's something you wanted to do in the fall, we do it as an independent study. Um, okay, I'm taking the research methods class already in the fall, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the yeah. last core class I need, so I probably should stick with that one. But uh, I've got, after that, I've got three um, open slots for electives, so yeah. maybe I'll look for this 575. Yep. And that's so, all on this tiddlywink, uh, tiddlywinks, <laughs> tiddlywiki? Yeah, if you go to a URL, I'll give it to you now, it's 
B I T. Uh, you don't even need to take a class. You can do it whenever you want. B I T. B I T. Dot do. Bit dot do. Looks like you've been there before. Slash. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, slash. Uh, design. Oh, yeah, because I have a link to 585. Design right. That's it. Yep. And. Um, That's cool. There we go. Oh. So you're welcome to um, work in the studio and join and, and it's probably not super self-explanatory, but I'll work on making that better. But this is a place that you can, I run it as an open class. So there's people from all over the world who occasionally submit things. Um, okay. And um, you're welcome to do it that way through an independent study or any class, but it's, it would be intriguing to yeah. look at this as a, as a way of, as a way of, Thinking. So my, my theory on hypertext is it really is a way of thinking and it changes the way we read, write, and think. No, and then this would be a perfect tie-in uh, to, to work. Yeah. To try to link work with, with my graduate studies, uh, yeah. which I'm sure they would be very happy to, to see. <laughs> yeah, when they do when we do that, we always peel something off that's not an official work project. So that when they decide, oh, well, we don't want you doing that anymore, they don't take away your thesis. So you say, well, I'm going to do something adjacent to work. And then if I do a demo and you guys love TiddlyWiki and they want to make a project, I'm always interested in looking for partners in the studio. So my, I haven't gotten any yet, but my idea is that someday folks will contribute, I don't know, five, ten, fifty thousand $50,000 a year, you know, big chunks, little chunks. And what the studio would do is we'd provide support to different organizations who are looking to integrate hypertextual thinking potentially using TiddlyWiki into their workflow. Um, and so it's a way to sort of, it's not exactly consulting, but if they ever want to say, okay, oh, now we're ready, we'll do this manual, then either they do it on their own or we provide some additional help for them. But at least they get the opportunity to be a sponsor. So This is kind of the direction my manager wants us to go in when we start doing more web-based uh, applications. So yeah, I might have to set something up. And she's out of the office right now, but... Uh, in the I near think, future, we might have to set something up where the three of us can chat. Uh, that would be terrific. Yeah, um, that's yeah. So it would be cool. It's it's. I, I, yeah. um, there's others that do software work in it. Um, it is kind of a shell, and you know, it's got a full. You can style everything in CSS, like everything. Um, right. And so you don't even know that you're looking at TiddlyWiki after a while. Yeah. But as a writer. I think for software it would be terrific. Like you, you, you change one word and it just populates everywhere. Oh yeah, and then you don't have to invest in a content management system, which is it's super expensive and it's an IT nightmare. And uh, you know, this sounds like it might be the um, much less expensive workaround to a full fledged content management system in terms of how a content management system. You know, you can update in the database. Your, your source text and just push it out to your web page, your, your data sheets, your, your manuals, whatever your outputs are, your help files. What you were just describing kind of sounds like it does that. Yes. Yeah. It, it has the potential and we need to, we need to build some of the infrastructure to support that. But then that infrastructure gets built to your specs. Um, and then, you know, and getting a collaborative workflow where you've got different people in the project who contribute and who write, and then there's a flow. It's like, okay, I got to edit this. That's all doable. Cool. And so uh, if I go back to that bit that do uh, URL, does that kind of give me an overview on TiddlyWiki? Um, you know, where do I go just to kind of get the, the 101 information that I would need to, to, to hit the ground running? Um, I think if you click on this is tiddly wiki, that's supposed to be what that's doing. Okay. Um, and then scroll down to new to tiddly wiki and there's links in that. Oops. Yeah, it's a little, okay. yeah. Okay. Getting, yeah. Okay. Something like yeah. getting started is exactly what I was looking for. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, great. Well, I'm glad we had the chance to have this conversation. Yeah, no, I really appreciate it. So if I don't turn in any of my assignments this week, it's probably because I've been playing around with this. <laughs> That's fine. No, I, I <laughs> well, I'm sure you won't. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I do warn you though; it is a little addictive. So. Yeah. No. This is great. This is great. And I, I, 
I'll have to see if I can uh, access this from work. Um, you was, can. It's very difficult to turn it off because you're not hitting a site. You go to tiddlywiki.com, they can turn it off. Okay. I mean, unless they've blocked that specific site. It's not an app. Oh, but wait a minute. I wasn't able to hit the... Um, well, you distribute this through, looks like, Dropbox. Yeah. Oh, you can't firewall. go to Dropbox? Our firewall blocks Dropbox. That's why I can't see the, the uh, wiki at work. I can see it on my phone. Yeah. Oh. What you can do if you get it on your phone? You have Dropbox on your phone? No, but I could set up a, an account and then link it to my phone. But I can I can go through Blackboard and hit the um, um, the syllabus and the wiki through there. And that works? Oh yeah, yeah, that works. Well, it's my private phone. Oh, your phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, wow, so they block Dropbox at work. Um, well, yeah, and then uh, when I when I took um, uh, what was the class I took with you? Oh, 507 last fall. Uh, you and Dr. Lazar already put everything up through Google Drive. The block Google Drive. So I was really okay. I need to do everything. What I try to do is I use my lunch hours at work to to get caught up on homework, so I'm not you know, running crazy at nights and weekends. Yeah. Um, so anything that gets posted through Google Drive, and I'm not at, and I'm not trying to suggest that you need to change that practice. I mean, I might be the only person in the audience. Oh no no no! That's a, it doesn't mean we're going to change it anyway. But yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anything that's outside, of, and I'm surprised Blackboard actually gets through. I really thought for sure that and uh, its predecessor Angel would have been blocked, but no, they work just fine. They just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> Hopefully they won't either. Now what's interesting is they also block all social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, yeah. Twitter, all that stuff, which I understand, um, YouTube. But for the students that are posting um, videos from YouTube, uh, linking or embedding them into the Blackboard um, posts like you instructed us to, those play through, which I find very interesting. I'm wondering, how is the firewall not seeing that this content is actually streaming in from YouTube? And, you know, they block must block at the URL that you visit level, and they don't process. Once, you, once they allow you to see a page, they let you see whatever's on that page. Must be, yeah, because uh, for um, um, the... the critiques we have to do this week, I'm able to watch all those videos that work through Blackboard, even though they've been posted through YouTube. So I just find it's kind of an interesting little loophole. That, that, wow. Oh, okay. okay. Well, the, um, you, can, you can probably get to tiddlywiki.com and probably download the starter, the, the empty, and then run, then, and from there you're running it on your own browser. You might not be able to get to my version of the wiki. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Now, whatever I do to kind of come up to speed on this, in my own, I'll obviously do on my own home laptop. So, and then once I get a feel for it, I'll talk to my manager about it. And then from there, we'll... Uh, yeah, it would be, I think it might be really interesting. That would be very intriguing. No, I like this idea for a project. I mean, I'm, I'm still a few semesters away from, from doing that, but at least this gives me plenty of time to think about it. And actually, when I, when I talked to you um, sometime last semester, I was kind of trying to think ahead of, of uh, for the semester for the, um, the thesis project. And this, this gives me a really good one. No, this is good. Yeah. It would be cool. Yeah. Really intriguing. I'd love to do it. And that would give us some, um, yeah. And I, there's lots, it's a whole worldwide open source community that would, that contributes and stuff. So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting little group. It's small, yeah. but intriguing. And um, yeah, I've been playing in Tiddly Wiki for a long time. So, um, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, well, thank you very much for your time today, Doctor. My pleasure. I'll talk to you again. All right. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye now. Bye.